Hey everyone, my name is Ru and we are here. This is going to be week number 10 of the UDL, the Ultimate Battle League, and uh, this is going to be the final week. This is pretty much a win and we are in situation. We will yoink the third seed from Jodor and uh, we'll be in a fantastic position to hopefully make another run. It is 7 in the morning and uh, it's not great overall, but we are going to make do with what we can do. And uh, I'm excited. I'm going to take a screenshot this time. Good lord. Uh, so let's see. Nope. Okay. Okay, look at that. We did it. We have the Gyarados, Umbreon, Landorus, Tapu Koko, Kiram, and the uh, Metacham. Okay, so... No Arcanine, no Cradilly, um, no Raichu, which is huge. No Metagross, which is nuts. No Metagross is actually huge. Um, either the either the Landers or the Kiram is going to be Scarfed, which is something to keep in mind. I was also kind of concerned about the Golbat as well, to be honest. But let's see here. Honestly, my Scizor is made like specifically just to deal with the Metagross because I don't deal terribly well with the Metagross overall, so I have my Scizor specifically to deal with it. Uh, but let's see here. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think... I have no idea what he would lead off with. I kind of want to lead off with my Queen again. Um... I also might just want to lead off with my Raichu. It would be super unfortunate if the Landers is scarfed and you lead off with that. But I think I'm just going to do it. I'm going to lead off with the Raichu. I'm going to lead off with the Raichu. If he leads off with a Scarfer, then that would be super, super unfortunate. But I just... Mm, I wouldn't see him leading off with a Scarfer in this situation. Um... Regardless, I feel like Raichu, generally speaking, gets off Volt Switches pretty freely, unless the Landers is scarfed. That would be the one huge, huge thing that I would have to um, keep an eye on. It does lead off directly with Landris, and I do really have to be concerned about the... About the... Well, actually, I have to be concerned about the Yachi Berry, TBH. But, he has to respect me just going for Hidden Power Ice. Landorus. Um, yeah, HP Ice to a no bulk Landorus should straight Oko. I am, um, max special attack life orb. I'm gonna switch out into my Shaman here. Uh, Shaman is kind of a direct, uh, check to this thing. I do expect him to have a physical Landorus. He does, um, from what I've seen, um, of his plays, he does like the physical landers. If I do see the U-turn, the fact that he's thinking about it makes me, um, think that he's not Scarfed, which would be fantastic for the, uh, game overall, and it would pretty much confirm, I feel like, uh, a Kiram Scarf, but, uh, for right now, uh, my, my, um, Shaman is a, a little bit of a direct counter. It can get off a U-turn, but I am, um, more or less max defense. And uh, I will be able to take that well. I'll be able to synthesis away any of the damage there. I I do retreat. So he did risk... Oh, we don't know yet. If he switches out, then we know that it's not Scarf. Does withdraw. Okay, confirm no Scarf. That's huge. That's huge. Um, does bring out the Kiram. So it does make me think that this thing might be Scarfed. Um, regardless, it's not a great matchup for me at all. I'm going to go out into my my scissor which is now a, a bit of a direct counter to this thing um i would definitely expect an ice beam to come in if we eat the ice beam and then it retreats and that would pretty much confirm that this thing is scarfed in which case uh regardless i'm gonna u-turn i'm not gonna click bullet punch into this thing uh u-turn would always be the play in this situation M probably would go want to go into the umbreon maybe the gyarados uh regardless um no matter what the situation is I feel pretty confident. I am reasonably confident that this thing is scarfed, though. I would be amazed if this thing wasn't scarfed the way that, um, with it his team's built and the way that, um, the first few turns have gone on. Um, 
I also did want to bring, I also really did want to bring a um, Surf Raichu, but um, just from my experience with it, Surf and um, Surf and Lightning Rung are, are incompatible with each other. So I do just retreat here um, into the Scizor, and it's going to be a two second click of U-turn, no matter what. If he stays in and goes for him power fire, like I said, um, this thing was, wow, that is a very strong Ice Beam. Let's see, it brought me down to 108. Brought me down to 108. Is that specs? Because if that's specs, I mean, first of all, that's wild. If that's specs, that's wild. But let's see. Hiram. Choice specs Hiram is already an option. And Ice Beam from a Hiram. To, actually, let me see. How much HP was that? 177 minus 108. That was 69 points of uh, HP. And. Yeah, that is definitely expects Hiram, Timid Specs. Actually, could it just be regular? Could it just be regular modest? Let me see. Let me test that out. Regular modest cannot hit that unless it's like Icicle Plate. Uh, Icicle Plate modest can hit it on an absolute max roll. Okay, so I have to assume that this thing is Specs. No matter what, your U turn is. 100% at the time of the play. I could have clicked knockoff. The knockoff might have been um, reasonably good for me there, but the fact that we know that this is a Specs Kiram and that basically Diancy outspeeds uh, most of his team, most of his team that matters, um, obviously not the not the uh, Gyarados if it gets a Dragon Dance up, but I'd be amazed if it was a Scarf Dragon Dance. Uh, it was a Scarfed Gyarados. Um, especially just the way that Beanie tends to run his Pokemon, I don't see that for him, but regardless, does bring in the Gyarados straight up, uh, probably just for the Intimidate, or primarily for the Intimidate, but I will be able to go into, actually what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to go into my Raichu and very freely go for a Volt Switch, and um, even if it goes into the Landorus, then if it goes into the Landorus, then I would feel pretty confident going for a Hidden Power Ice. I could also click Nasty Plot right now. What does Nasty Plot do for me? What does Nasty Plot do for me? Um, that would it help me with any Kiram? No, I just can't touch the Kiram no matter what. I'm going to click Volt Switch here. He's going to see that I'm Life Orbed, um, unless the Landorus comes in. But again, the fact that he's thinking about this, um, the only thing that I'm, ha that I would have to be concerned about with the Landorus would be the Yachi Berry, unless he completely pro played me and, uh, he was taking that much time on purpose in order for, to make me think that, um, he was vulnerable to Hidden Power Ice, but if that's his play, then, man, that's just insane. Uh, that's just insane. But, um, if I were him, I'd probably go into the Kiram expecting, but he would have to respect the Focus Blast, I suppose. Maybe that that's what he's uh, considering right now. Um, Umbreon could always be a catch-all switch in. Um... Coco and Medicham would make the most sense, especially pre pre um, Mega Evolution does withdraw, goes into the uh, Kiram. So yeah, that is his play. That is definitely his play. Does get to um, resist whatever hit I, I go for him. So now this is going to be interesting. We do have this thing down to down fifteen percent. Um, Diancy Moonblast. Okay, so because this is specs, we, we should probably assume max... Um, oh, oh yeah, we know it's modest based on the damage from earlier, but if it's max HP... If it's max HP, then Moonblast still nets me a KO. And this could be huge. I don't think he really has a switch into just a straight-up Moonblast for my Mega Diancy. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I don't see his switch in really, except maybe Gyarados if it's super duper bulky, but um, 
I feel like everything gets two hit by it, and especially the fact that um, I don't see anything that immediately outspeeds me other, other than the Coco, but the Coco, I feel like I would um, reasonably take a hit. I just click Moonblast. I just click Moonblast. I don't really see his answer, and again, I was so fearful of that Metagross. If he had brought that Metagross, I would be um, in pretty bad shape, but um, the fact that we don't see it, like I said, I gave up my Scizor, basically. I built an entire Scizor just to deal with the Metagross, because I really didn't have a whole lot that would deal with that um, specific Mon, especially against my team with the Mega Niancy. But um, without it, and without any true, true Scarfers, I don't really see what switches in here. Um, I do, I would like to see what a Coco does. Maybe the Coco is packing, maybe the Coco is packing Hidden Power Steel. That um, is possible. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Does it get Iron Head or anything like that? Yeah, Thunderbolt is nowhere near a KO. Could be Specs, to be fair. If it's uh, Z Coco, then yeah, Z Coco takes me out. Okay, that's fair play. Um, what about a Hidden Power Steel Coco? But does it get like Steel Wing? Could that be a thing? I should have done more research on top of Coco. To be fair, does withdraw. But this is a straight up Moon Blast coming in. Um. I don't know what this would do. Um, I specifically outspeed this thing. Um, and if this is a sack, then this opens up the world to my Raichu. But this has to do over half. Yeah, it does well over half. And I don't see a drawback to just going... Maybe, oh, maybe expected Power Gem? Even regardless, Power Gem should, isn't that big of a drop-off in terms of damage. I feel like I have to play Moonblast again, right? He still he still doesn't have a switch in, and I, if it's Scarf, if he was bluffing Scarf this entire time, then, I mean, hats off to him. I feel like he just beats me in that situation, but uh, at the same time, I just don't see it. And, um, I don't know. Let me see a few things here. I still do want to... Okay, I still do want to do some research on Coco. Let's see here. If Coco gets Steel Wing, then I might be honestly a little bit scared. Um, let's just filter Steel moves. It does get Steel Wing, so we could have. Z oh, it gets z uh, Iron Head as well, so it could just have straight up Z Iron Head. For all I know, Z Iron Head Coco could be the play. Um. Coco wouldn't be able to switch into a Moonblast? Well, yeah, no, it, it would be. It would be able to take a Moonblast if it switched in now. So the fact that it didn't switch in just now, I mean, it could just mean that he wants to save it for the rest of the match. And, um... Oh, he could be risking Modest uh, Diancy as well. But I can never risk that with um, everything going on. Um, Beanie is a little bit notorious for uh, taking time, taking his time uh, in between moves. So uh, that's going to be a fun time. But I think we'll be okay. It does switch out, which I don't quite, quite understand, but um, we will see a Moonblast go into this thing. I feel like this has to be a 2 KO. It is dang near a 1-hit KO. And, man, if I'm being really, really honest, I kind of want to just go for a Calm Mind. <laughs> no, that's ridiculous, because, um, because Metacham can always come in and, um, Threaten Bullet Punch, and I actually do want... No, there's no way I take a Bullet Punch, let's see. Uh, I know that... I'm conceding that I don't take a Bullet Punch, but I am curious as to what the... how those percentages line up. Uh, let's see, let's see. I need to give you Bullet Punch. Um, minimum 108, okay, so... Um, not as much as I would have thought, but this will take down the the Umbreon. So, okay, we're in okay shape here. And now... Oh, wow, that voice crack. Okay, I'm gonna, I might I might just edit that out. That is not a good look. Um, But now, I don't see a terribly 
good option for him. Um, if he goes into the Gyarados, honestly, okay, if he goes into the Gyarados, I might just have to risk the Diancie and click Power Gem, because he, if he uses that for a free Dragon Dance, well, okay, if he uses it for a free Dragon Dance, then I have, then I have Incineroar as an option to take away his attack, but, man, that's not a great option. If Gyarados sets up a sub, ooh, that would be brutal. Yeah, I might have to risk Diancie if, if, um, he goes into Gyarados right now. I do have Power Gem, but I'm not, I wouldn't be too, too confident about the Oko. Um, to a No Bulk Gyarados. To a No Bulk Gyarados, Power Gem has a 62% chance to Oko, 62.5% chance to Oko. Um, I guess I do have Diancy to be fair. Not Diancy, uh, Shaman. And I can get off a little bit of damage with my Scizor, but Scizor is not going to be, uh, the wave, as it were. Um, fun fact, okay. No, uh, the reason my Scizor is named the wave, um, is because... Goes into this thing, yeah, no. Clearly this was his play, to threaten Bullet Punch every single time. Uh, the fact that he gave up his, uh, Shaman, or that... Umbreon was pretty interesting, but um, regardless, the play always has to just be to go into my Incineroar. Um, but yeah, no. So, I, I think when I was drafting this team, or it could have been a different team, I've been drafting Scizor a decent amount um, whenever I can, but no. Um, probably when I was drafting this team, I I was talking to Randy, HLD Productions, um, about what I should draft, and I kept thinking that I wanted to draft Scizor, and he kept telling me uh, Scizor is not the wave. He wanted me to draft something else. I can't honestly remember what it was, but uh, I really wanted to draft Scizor, and I kept telling him no. And I kept telling him no. Scizor is the wave, and uh, I just felt like Scizor, uh, calling Scizor the wave had to be the play, especially since when it attacks, it does it like its wave motion. I thought it was uh, a perfect nickname. I love it. I I think it's hilarious to me. Regardless, gets the bullet punch off. Um, does close to nothing. We are salt vested. We are very defensive, but we are self vested. And, um, I can just U turn. I can also knock off. I can also knock off. But no, U turn has to be the play, right? Uh, this thing could drain punch me. Actually, yeah, drain punch is not ideal. Let me see. Metacham. Uh, maybe I should pull a double here. Maybe I should pull a double here. Double on a scissor? Maybe double on the Scizor. Metacham against Incineroar. Um, even at minus one, we do not take a high jump kick. Uh, yeah. Wow, we don't take anything. Okay. Even Drain Punch? Let's see Drain Punch. Drain Punch does so much damage to my Incineroar. Oh, I made my Incineroar especially defensive. Never mind. So never mind about that. I might just switch out again. Um, yeah, I could I could switch out into into Scizor right now. Scizor got a U turn off. He's he's staying in, so he could just be drain punching right now. Yeah. Um, I believe I was at 118 down to 64. That's about 50 points of damage. So. Um, I, I would I'd be surprised if he wasn't just max attack jolly, but uh, let's see. Let's just confirm. Let's just confirm. TBH, he's, he's probably going to take uh, a whole lot of time during his turn, so let's uh, take a dang second. Actually, even an uninvested bullet punch does a very decent amount to this thing, but you turn always has to be the play. I don't think you would want to stay in risk um, taking a whole bunch of damage onto this thing. Um, but let's see. Drain punch against a scissor. Huh. I could be wrong, but I think I was I, I was I think I was at 118 HP, if I'm not mistaken. And that brought me down to about 60. That should be about 50 points, which uh is nowhere near a max attack Mega Medicham. Oh, because he's at minus one. I forgot to dial in minus one. That's the that's the thing. Okay. Drain punch, yeah, okay. That's that's perfectly in line. I'm gonna click U-turn. I um, I should click Roost. But no, I don't want to give him any unnecessary momentum. 
I don't want to give him any unnecessary momentum. He's at minus one. He is going to be taking... He has to assume for now that um, I'm a very powerful scissor. And, well, no. He could be. He could have already seen that I'm pretty darn defensive. Let's go back into this thing once again. And it will allow me to uh, get another U-turn off. Which is pretty much exactly the same situation as last time. Uh, so let's see here. Let's see here. Is there any other play than to go back into Raichu and click Volt Switch once again? I feel like that is the play 100% of the time. And, um, actually, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold the heck in the phone. Um, the only mod that went down so far is Umbreon, right? I think, well, I think this might be my opportunity to get a Nasty Plot up because that Moonblast did so much damage to the Kiram. That Moonblast did so much damage to the Kiram that, um, that plus two Raichu might be able to take it out with a Discharge. It's looking good for me. If that's the case. Uh, let me see. Oh, but this thing has to be max HP, right? For it to have taken Moonblast like that before? Raichu at plus two. It's gonna be close, but I feel like the play has to be the nasty plot. Does withdraw. Does go into this thing. But we will get the nasty plot. Oh no, he went into this thing. Okay, no, he never went. The Kiram never took damage. Um, the Kiram never took damage. I'm gonna click hit power ice, and we're gonna see how how deep of a run this Raichu can make right now. HP Ice, um, we'll be able to take this thing out, um, but regardless, um, that prior damage on the, from the Diancy was pretty necessary in order for me to not have to fear the Yachi beer right now, I guess, I guess, uh, plus two Raichu, I wouldn't have to fear it anyway because of, um, because of, uh, the, my nasty plot, but it's fine. I think his only play right now would have to be to go into the Kiram. Um, does it give me the free U-turn out? It does something. I don't quite yet know what it would be. Oh, it would have to be the um, Incineroar. Have to be the Incineroar. He's not in a position yet where he can freely drop a Draco. Uh, as much as I'm sure he would like to drop a, spec a Specs Draco, he has to uh, respect the Diancy. He would have to click Ice Beam, which would allow me to go into my uh, specially defensive Assault Vested um, Incineroar, and I can U-turn out into a better matchup. Um, and then we just go on from there. We just go on from there. Um, I could bring my Diancy back in, and I can get a very, very, very free Moonblast off. And uh, we can uh, get another big hit off, and it's going to wear down his team over time. If I do get a chance, I do want to try and prioritize getting up rocks if I can, because... Uh, with all of this switching, it would be pretty darn beneficial for me in the longer run. Oh, he could also click Earth Power. Earth Power could be a play. Earth Power could be a play. Huh. I mean, I, I mean, regardless, I click Volt Switch every dang time. And I do have to uh, take this opportunity to gauge damage. He was at 85%. Goes down to about 60, so that's about 25%. I believe that would, yeah, that pretty much confirms max HP at the very least. Um, he could have clicked Earth Power. He could have clicked Earth Power. Yeah, Earth Power makes so much sense. I could go into Shaman, but that's a huge, huge risk. Realistically, I need the Shaman, as much as I want to make the Flex Fly, um, the Shaman does have to deal with the Mega Metacham as a backup option. Um... So yeah, I can definitely just go into my Incineroar for right now, and um, I would be surprised if even Earth Power is a two-hit KO with how specially defensive I am. And it's 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 a roll, but um, I think I take it and I get a U-turn off, or I could Drain Punch here. 
What does he bring in? Probably brings in Gyarados. Could bring in Gyarados. Could bring in Tapu Koko. Could stay in or just Earth Power again. Um, I'm gonna click U-turn. I think I take this second Earth Power. I almost definitely take the second Earth Power, unless he gets a very aggressive high roll. But yeah, he could, um, he could be figuring out now that I am uh, definitely assault vested. I am um, 180 plus. I'm um, careful nature. Uh, 180 EVs into special defense and assault vested, which is uh, pretty much the only reason I felt confident enough to go into uh, this thing right now. He could be definitely risking some big damage onto this thing right now, or it could just be expecting me to go for the U-turn. He could want to stay in, go for another Earth Power. Regardless, if he does do that, if he does allow me a U-turn, then he does allow Diancy to get a very big hit off once again. Um, he definitely wouldn't want to risk the Tapu Koko, um, because at that point it might be his win con. Um, but the Kiram is getting worn down, which is pretty darn important for me. And, um, overall, does withdraw, okay. So, that means my Incineroar is going to be around for, uh, yet another go. And, uh, we could do this entire thing again, because I really can't switch into anything else on this thing except for my Raichu. I really cannot switch into anything except my Raichu right now. And um, he has to respect the bolt switch. He has to switch out and take some damage onto something. He no longer has his immunity. Even if he takes the chip damage on the Kiram, that's still chip damage on the Kiram, which is going to be um, important for the later game. But just knowing that this is a Specs Kiram. Right? Um, I think takes Earth Power super duper well. Yeah. I could also click Discharge. Just straight up Discharge could... Um... It could threaten... A Kiram switch in? Actually, no. I don't think it does. I don't think it does. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, no, it doesn't. I have to click Volt Switch. I have to click Volt Switch. Uh, unfortunately, the Kiram is going to be a huge pain in, this, in my side that's going to um, make this game a whole lot longer than it needs to be, but um, I have to be careful around it. That Kiram can legitimately win him the match. Specs Earth Power, from what I can tell, um, will Oko Diancy. Um, um, my Incineroar is not going to be a switch in for much longer. Uh, Shaman, we have to play guessing games between Earth Power and Ice Beam. Uh, Scizor is not going to take an Earth Power unless I get a Roost Up. And, uh, Raichu, obviously not. Let's go back into this thing. It's letting this thing get worn down, which I guess is better than get his offensive threats getting worn down. But, uh... Ah, uh, man, I don't know. It just lets in my Diancy once again. I have no reason to go into anything but Diancy right now. And I feel like if he lets this thing go down, then it's pretty much over. And that Gyarados has taken so much chip damage from just U-turns that I want to say I want to say uh, I don't quite Oko with with um, Moonblast from here I might just click Power Gem Power Gem should still KO the Kiram, right? From half, it has to, right? We we know that you're max specs, so at most you can be max HP. 
yeah, power gem KOs from here. So we click power gem. We click power gem. We know your specs. You can't be some cheeky assault vest, some charty berries, anything like that. And it protects me against the Gyarados switch in. Um, if he tries to switch into Coco, I miss out on some damage there, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It does go into Coco. Now this is interesting because um, I do have pretty much one of the best Coco counters in the game available to me in the I probably KO without if I go for Moonblast, right? Coco. I think that's a Noble Coco. 75%? Yeah, that's right in line with Power Gem. Okay, so Moonblast never threatens a KO. Okay, so that's okay for me. I would be surprised if he didn't click U-Turn right now, but my play every single time has to be to go into the um, Nidoqueen. Nidoqueen is one of the best um, Coco counters out there, and I have really no other play. Um, interestingly enough, if he goes into the Gyarados, then I have to hold my ground and go for the Thunderbolt because I can't let it get a Dragon Dance up, I can't let it get a sub up, I can't let it do anything. If he goes into the Kiram, then Kiram gets a Mikao, um, no matter what, because... Okay, realistically, if he goes into the Kiram, I might expect him to Earth Power and I might go into the Shaman, maybe. Ma no, that's a flex play that I can't make. As much as it's a play that I want to make, it's a flex play that I don't feel like I can make. Let's go for the Dazzling Gleam, it will be resisted, and we do get Rocks up right now, and that's going to be incredibly helpful for the rest of the match. And uh, even if it goes for the U-turn, we are pretty darn defensive. I believe, I don't even remember, I'm, I, come, I might have made this physically defensive, I might have made it especially defensive, I don't honestly remember. But, uh, I'm just going to play South Rock, it has to be a play with all this thing switching. Um, and it's going to help out some calcs in the future. Uh, again, I'd be surprised if it didn't go for U-Turn. If it didn't, I mean, it could be it could be specs. I guess I should eat some damage. Um, 176. Probably drop me down to 60, which is 30 points. It's probably not specs, but... We're going to do our due diligence. Hidden Power, Hidden Power Ice. I mean, fine. So it's clearly not Spax, but I do get Ronks up, and uh, I can click Earth Power, man. Is there reason to click? Is there reason to click anything but Earth Power? Okay, um, Gyarados switching in. I don't want to do. I don't want to let this Gyarados come in for free. Thunderbolt. Even in terrain is a roll. Thunderbolt even in terrain is a roll. It's a roll that's probably in my favor, but it's a definite roll. And that's almost exactly 25%. I can't risk that. I can't. I have to click or I could click Ice Beam. Ice Beam is a better play, right? Ice Beam protects against the Kiram, it protects against the Gyarados. It still KOs this thing. Um, I'm gonna click Ice Beam. Goes for another hidden power. Does let me take out the Coco. So that's good. And um, an Ice Beam should just about do it. And uh, down to the Kiram, which is at half. Down to the Gyarados, which is um, at about 75-ish percent. It's gonna go down to... 50. And uh, the Metacham. Could go into the Metacham, get his Zen Headbutt off. Um, really, any of his remaining Mons are options against my Nidoqueen. Any of his remaining Mons are options against my Nidoqueen. If the Metacham comes in, then I have to go into... If the Metacham comes in, I probably go into Scizor. No, if the Metacham comes in, I go into um, Incineroar. Or the Shaman. 
if the Gyarados comes in, I Thunderbolt. I have to click Thunderbolt into it. If the Curum comes in, I probably just sack at that point, right? I probably just sack. Yeah, if the Gyarados comes in, then at worst I'm sacking off my my Nita Queen. Um but I can't let it get a Dragon Ants up for no reason. I can't let it do that. Um, no matter what, no matter what move the Kyurem goes for, he's putting himself in a bad position if I sack off this Needle Queen because my Dancy comes in for free. The Stealth Rock gives um, his Kyurem and his Gyarados limited switches, switches in, and um, I can deal with the... Uh, meta chain, no matter what happens. Let's get intimidated off. Like I said, I cannot give this thing a free turn. If I sack this thing off, then I sack this thing off, but um, there's no planet in which I can let this thing just get a dang free um, Dragon Dance. So I'm going to click Thunderbolt. I am in terrain. Uh, it is quite effective. If he does try to get a cheeky Dragon Dance up, if he does try to get a cheeky sub up, then. This is absolutely the play that we had to had to make. And if we get taken out, we get taken out. We we can go into uh, we can go into pretty much anything. But Diancy is definitely the play. Diancy Moonblast should just about be a guaranteed uh, KO. Um, assuming it's a Noble Gyarados, I might go for Power Gem just for the just for the yeah. It does go for Dragon Dance? Okay. Okay. Yeah, there was no way that we could do anything except just click Thunderbolt. And, uh, from here... Um, from here... Uh, we don't take anything, which is unfortunate. I wish we could, but especially the Kyrim being specs, uh, we probably don't take anything anyway. Excuse me. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Sends out this thing. Um, this is interesting. Medicham. Make a Medicham. Hmm. Could be going for Ice Punch right now. Could be going for Ice Punch right now. Is there a switch that's worth making? I don't- I feel like there isn't. Shaman... Man, as, as defensive as my Shaman is, um, Ice Punch does over half, so I'm going to just get an Intimidated off. If it goes for a Zen Headbutt, if it goes for an Ice Punch, then um, that would be interesting. It, um, it could go for a Drain Punch. I don't... Mm, I potentially take a Drain Punch. I don't take I don't, I don't take a Jump Kick, but I potentially take a Drain Punch. He could be weighing his options. Um, with my Incineroar potentially switching in, but I think no matter what, the Intimidate would make it worth it in the end. No matter what, I feel like the Intimidate would make this play worth it. it does go for the Ice Punch. And I think, honestly, now that I have the minus one, I can... Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this play because uh, the, just the possibility of getting this thing to minus two just by like cycling intimidates um, is super tempting to me, and it's a play that I might just have to make just to uh, ensure that I don't lose this match. Um, my team is pretty weak to hear him, in honesty. Let's go for the Drain Punch. 
Uh, this thing will bullet punch. I think we I think we kind of forced the thing into going for bullet punch. And uh, my Incineroar can just come back in. This time I click U-turn on my Incineroar. This time I definitely, definitely, definitely click bullet punch on my Incineroar. Or U-turn on my Incineroar. Um, but let's see. The thing is, I don't want to lose to this Metacham. Let's go for the Drain Punch. Okay, he made the play, but, um... It will let me go into... Well, let me go into Raichu, and I believe Raichu should clean up this match, because... Um... Raichu's going to allow... Raichu, if he does decide to switch into the Kiram, it's going to go down to 25%, and two discharges are going to take out um, the Kiram. If he goes for the Bullet Punch, then just getting off big uh, discharge damage onto this thing. Oh, I should have clicked Bolt Switch, shouldn't I? Yeah, because he has to switch into the Kiram. The, the only way he gives himself a chance is to go into um, Kiram aggressively. It is still, it is 8 in the morning still, but we're, we're here, we're here. Um, At this point, his only chance would be to... We'll go into the Kiram, so Volt Switch should have been my play. Um, yeah. Oh well. Uh, regardless, this Raichu is going to get a Discharge off. Uh, let's see. Let's go for the Drain Punch. And, let's see, from here... From here, I think Shaman wins. From here, Shaman clicks Seed Flare. Um, if the Kiram comes in, then it would reset the Intimidates, which is um not great, but um. Regardless, this thing is going to be at full HP to take on to take it on. Regardless, because I can switch around uh, the Kiram no matter what, and um, I can make a play from there. But he's going to be getting a lot of HP back from Drain Punch. This Metacham could still beat me. This Metacham could still beat me. I might have. Hmm. Just by me. Oh, okay. So if I click Volt Switch and sacked off my Scizor, then my Raichu comes back in and pretty much wins from there. Hmm. I could have choked. Actually, I could genuinely could have just choked. But um, see clear here if he stays in. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Does withdraw. Seed Flare is going to do a very decent amount of damage. See, as much as I think that this thing is max, um, is max. Uh, HP, I feel like I can't risk it in case this thing does outspeed me. I can realistically, um, sag off my, my Nita Queen to an incoming Earth Power just to get into my Diancy. Diancy can Moonblast and Shaman has to 1v1 the Metacham, which I think is... A fair play, but um, I guess we're just gonna have to see.
I guess we're just gonna have to see. And um, if for whatever reason the Metacham doesn't have Bullet Punch, then that would be wild, but um, it always has Bullet Punch. But against a team with a Bigot Ancy on it, it has to. Let's see. Um, there's no way that we would take. There's no way that we would take a bullet punch, but um, let's see here. Um, yeah, we just clicked Moonblast. If he, mm, if he potentially has a fake out, fake out in a Drain Punch could be a possibility, and it could um, put him in a fantastic position to win this match, but um, that is way, way, way too risky. I should have, I should have saved my Intimidate. I should have saved one last Intimidate. I, if I just sacked off the Scizor when I did, then, uh, just go for the Bull Punch. That'll take it out. It's totally fine. But let's see. Bullet Punch. Drain Punch. We've seen Ice Punch, right? Should I click Leaf Seed? I should just click. He has to like Drain Punch, right? Drain Punch against Shaman. How much is he gonna recover against Shaman? Recover so much against Shaman. But no, we yeah, we we have to click Leaf Seed. I believe. Let's go for the Ice Punch. And the Leaf Seed will ensure that we take another Ice Punch. And, uh... Seed Flare will... Finish up the match. Even if it does go for the Drain Punch, then, um, we can deal with that. Let's go for another Ice Punch. We do take it. Do we land the Seed Flare? We do land the Seed Flare. Thankfully, thankfully, thankfully. And, um, that's gonna win us the game. It was a pretty tight 2-0 in the end. The Mega Metacham did kind of have my number, um, quite a bit. I, di I, I didn't respect it enough, in all fairness, but I should have played better with my Intimidate. I almost choked the match there, but regardless, that's going to be how we win. We will end up yoinking that third seed. Hopefully, I get this out on time, and um, that's going to be it for me. It was a pretty fun season. Like I said, we will get that third seed. We will um, extend our season out a little bit um, in playoffs. We will see how far we can do we can get, and we'll see what we can do. With that, then, guys, so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more UBL with uh, ICBA playoffs. That's going to be a whole lot of fun as well, and um, other fun stuff as well. Once again, with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Once again. Out.